Corey here from Solenoid Studio, and today we're going to be having a special look at a series of videos covering the Soundiron Symphony Series Brass. Now, the Symphony Series is a new series that is being undertaken by Native Instruments covering the orchestral sections. Native Instruments is basically approaching other producers and sound engineers to record the different parts. Um, at the time of this video, only the strings and brass have been released, and Sound Iron were chose to record the brass, which was a very wise choice. Now, Sound Iron have a history with Foley and sound design recording, so they really know their stuff when it comes to recording a, a variety of problem sounds and um, recording them in a neutral way. They have a really specific technique um, and they're very strict about it. They record all of their instruments the same way, uh, whether it be strings, brass, percussion, they have a very strict technique about it. The only thing that varies is the environment the instrument is placed in and the distance between the instrument and the mics. Everything else, they basically keep very consistent, which is something, uh, a technique that they've developed over the years um, being sound engineers, to maintain that real clear, high fidelity, neutral sounding quality without being coloured by certain preamps or mics. And it's, it's a very, very uh, solid and, and great technique for them to use, which uh, they've become very important sample providers over the years um, for many composers, especially when it comes to uh, unique sounds. Um, like if you've heard any of, this, of the libraries that Soundine have, you'll understand what I mean. So Soundiron is a unique company in that way. Now, let's have a look at the, the brass, the instrument itself, and the sound. Let's have a talk about the brass sound. Now, brass is a unique instrument. Unlike strings, that can be played extremely softly or loudly by using a brushing technique, which is a little easier on the ears, or woodwinds, which have basically a perfect tone and don't have any brassiness uh, about them, or the high decibels that brass have. Brass is uh, probably the most misunderstood aspect of the uh, orchestral section, um, especially when it comes to recording and when it comes to placement. Now, a lot of libraries will record uh, brass up close and personal in basically a dead space. Um, we've seen this technique done many times before and they do it to maintain complete control over the samples um, when it becomes a sample library. Now the only problem this has is it makes the brass sound splurty. All you're hearing is the sound exiting the instrument um, because the instrument is made of copper and brass and um, various other types of, of things depending on the instrument. When the sound comes out, all you're really hearing is the loudness, is the decibels, is basically the air pressure being pushed out. So recording up close, in my opinion, and um, I'm sure in opinion of a lot of other sound designers and people who, who are fans of that massive kind of uh, controlled brass sound you get in... Uh, soundtracks like like uh, Joe Hisaishi's soundtracks or the soundtrack to Nino Kuni, you hear that beautiful ringing brass in the background and it doesn't overtake the orchestra or sound too close. That is the sort of sound you want and recording up close doesn't achieve that. Now what about recording in a studio hall? Well, let's have a think about that. There are some other libraries that were recorded in a controlled uh, session orchestra environment, which is, it's, it isn't a concert hall, it isn't a church, it's a purpose-built studio, which allows the instruments to breathe a bit more, and allows you to get further mic positions, but there still isn't very much reverberation. So often, you will hear some of that, some of that uh, timbre of, of the brass, but you won't get the true reverberations. So when you play libraries like that, they tend to sound a little up close, a, a little bloated, and they tend to take up a lot of the stereo space, and you have to put heaps of reverb, and you've got to do a fair amount of mixing and compression to get them to fit into a soundtrack. Uh, I mean, of course, unless you're making trailer music where all you <laughs> basically do is put everything in the listener's face and then compress the crap out of it. And that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a true brass sound. We're talking about um, 
a, a, a distinguished sound for, for people who want to make professional uh, music um, for, for various different genres and people who, who sort of want to get that, that true brass sound. Now, the third way to do it, the way that works the best, that is recording in a proper concert, uh, concert hall environment or a church. There are a few companies that have done this, like Project Sam. Um, they were a little closer, so the brass does sound a bit more thick, but that was a very popular library. There was the original um, symphony, uh, Symphonic Orchestra Gold and Platinum from, from Quantum Leap um, that, that had that nice sound to it, obviously a much older library. And then there's the Spitfire Audio series of BML brass, which do have that great sound. They, they have a, a perfect capturing of the resonance of the brass in a hall environment. But I hate to say it, it's, in, 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 my, my, uh, in my opinion, um, those libraries are <sighs> overpriced. Very, very, very overpriced, very unfairly priced. And I have to say it because it's simply a matter of how much money can a person earn um, <laughs> and then spend on a, a library. And it, it seems to me that the only sort of people who have the money to spend on these libraries are the sort of people who are not going to end up using them in the finished product in the end anyway, because they do have enough money to <sighs> lead up all of the best musicians and get a live recording. So that being said, I'm going to leave that. I don't want to say any more about that. I'm going to talk about Sound Iron's Brass. Now, what you've heard previously when I was talking about brass, it leads us to Sound Iron. Sound Iron have taken the route of recording the brass in its truest form. Now, why do I say that? Well, let's have a talk about brass itself. Let's have a talk about the timbre of brass. Now, brass is a unique instrument. Unlike strings and woodwinds, Brass resonates much more. It forces air pressure much more. It affects the physical vibrations of its environment at a higher rate. And because it's made of metal, it also has a very ringing, reverberant sound that has to be baked. Now, brass is an often misunderstood instrument. Like I said, when you record it close, you're only getting the air pressure. When you record it mid, you're only getting the um, immediate timbre of the instrument. But brass is very, very unique. It is unlike other instruments. You have to think about the materials it's made out of and the force that's required to play it. Brass are among the most uh, hardest instruments to play. The hardest one of all being the giant tuba. There is no instrument on the planet that is harder to play than a giant tuba. It's, there's no instrument that is more taxing on the human than a giant tuba, and for that matter, other things like contrabass tubas and, and, and tubas and, and cimbasos or chimbasos. There's nothing more taxing on a musician. Now, taking this into account, we have a listen to where is brass placed in a symphonic setting? It's usually placed at the back. Why is it placed at the back? Well, that's because Obviously, it makes more noise, but because the reverberation of the brass is much more important than the reverberation of the woodwinds or the strings. Now, let's talk about why. Why is that so? Well, let's have a little look at the Greek cooked turkey analogy. Now, this is a strange thing to say, especially in a little walkthrough <laughs> video for a series of brass. It may seem completely off topic, but follow me along and you'll understand what I mean. You take a turkey. Now, the person who's going to cook this turkey is an accomplished Greek chef. Now, as we know, Greek love their meals prepared, marinated. Uh, they love cooking their food and letting it sit. They love to get the flavor out of it. Now, this person has stuffed this turkey with a variety of stuffing and herbs and spices and, and other little knickknacks and secret recipes, and he's marinated it in wine and pan juices and oil and all of this stuff. Now, you take that turkey out of that pan um, within an hour, and you dig into it, 
you're just going to get your regular turkey flavor and you're going to miss all of the flavor from that stuffing. It's basically going to just taste like your average uh, charcoal chicken that you get from down the street. What is the philosophy that we need to use to make this Greek cooked turkey taste good? Well, what do the Greeks say? They will let it marinate overnight. They marinate it overnight, let all of that Ah, all of that unique flavor soak in right to the core of that turkey and then pull it out and then cook it. And when the turkey cooks, all of the oils and stuff in it, it cooks softly. It doesn't go hard. It doesn't uh, become overcooked quickly. And all of that flavor suddenly comes together. What seems like a long process and might seem a little um, uh, long-winded, <laughs> to use some sort of analogy towards brass, ends up becoming a very, very well-made dish. Now, how does this relate to brass? Well, let's think of the brass instrument itself as the raw turkey. Brass, copper and brass and metal by itself is not the most attractive sounding um, material, especially when wind is blown through it. It's uh, very ringy and it pushes air a lot more and its vibrations are of higher decibels. Now, if you were to just chuck in a, a bunch of brass instruments recorded in a dead space, you would only get that element. If you were to let the brass cook a little while in the reverberant space, a sort of a mid space, you'd get more flavor. But in order to get the true brass sound, in order to get, in order to take advantage of everything that brass has to offer, you need to let it sit in the audio sources. And what the audio sources are, reverberation and echo and what a reverberation and echo environment so what we've come to now is the brass needs to be sat in a position in the concert hall or church where it can ring free and then all of those rever uh, reverberations echoes and reflections need to pick up the air pressure that comes out of that brass instrument and mix and mold and they need to sit and cook and, and when they're finally finished, they enter into that mic and you get all of those early and late reflections and you get the true flavor and timbre of that instrument. It's, it seems a little convoluted, no pun intended, but it's, it's the only true way to get that brass sound. And that is why brass is so misunderstood by a lot of sound designers. And that is what makes brass's sound so incredible and a lot of people struggle to get that sound but that is the technique and that is the approach that the guys from sound Iron have used to record the symphony series brass now <laughs> i had to basically go through a long explanation there but this is the introduction video and i just wanted to get you up to date on that on on the sound that is what makes brass special the reverberations, its environment, because brass on its own is just a metal instrument that pushes out air, but the secret lies in the reflections. And that is why I appreciate this brass library so much and why I think uh, many of you out there, if you pick it up and use it and put it into your orchestral mix, you'll realize exactly how brilliant this library is it needs minimal mixing it needs minimal uh reverb you don't need to push it back into the mix because it was recorded from far away um especially the the farm mics so you don't need to worry about that you get the crack that you get <clears throat> when, when a brass instrument when they blow hard like for the staccatos you get that crack and that crack has to reverberate for you to get the full effect you know you can't just get the blurty effect that comes out right next to the mic. You need that full punch, that crack that, that sits in the rever reverberation. And the close mics have plenty of rever reverberation too, but they're still controlled. So you can put your own reverb on them and they still sit well. They don't sound, um, they don't sound splatty, if, 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 that, if that makes sense. They sound more chocolatey because of that reverberation. Now... The reason I'm telling you this and the reason I'm, I'm doing all this, um, doing this review of this library is because this library <clears throat> was a little misunderstood. Let, let, let's, let's come to the release part of this introduction before we finish and move on to the actual instruments. This is about the release. Now, when this library first came out, there was utter confusion. 
I had to say, the library was released in the wrong place at the wrong time, unfortunately. The library is brilliant, it is top-notch, complete quality, filled with articulations, beautiful sound. Um, it has a sense of human touch to it. There are a lot of imperfections recorded in the library that don't affect the, the song or your composition in a negative way. They sound very human, they breathe, and that's what makes this library so great. But when it was released through Native Instruments for the, the Symphony series, as we know, Complete Ultimate, Complete 9, Complete 10 Ultimate, is a package that a lot of people invest in because um, you get full version of Contact. Anyone who's anyone who makes music in, in their house or in their studio knows that Contact is a very powerful platform. So Complete Ultimate is usually the thing people get. For about 1000 $1,200, they get the full version of Contact and they get a slew of other libraries that come with it from Native Instruments and their partners who have released libraries under them before. So a lot of people go for this. But because this package had so much um, uh, content in it and because that complete package was such a selling point, when they got around to selling the brass they couldn't just chuck the brass in because the brass is such this this library is so expansive and it it's it's worth a lot more than the price that you would end up paying for it in incomplete see soundline would end up getting <laughs> i hate to say it they would probably end up getting less than $50 per sale if this was put into complete um <sighs> probably less and that is sad that's is it's very you, you can't do that you know so the decision was made to not include it in complete instead a decision was made to in, have it as a separate series called symphony series and here they were sold at full price now native instruments pricing i don't agree with i, I don't believe that they should slap a um 700 i think it's 700 australian dollars $700 price on this library. Um, it's it's a bit steep, but they do have um, one saving grace, which is a cross-grade plan. If you already have complete ultimate, like 9 or 10 or something like that, you'll get a couple hundred dollars off it, which brings it down to a more reasonable price, a price that is affordable and a price that the library is worth. That kind of solved the ordeal of it being released as its own series and not being put into complete ultimate. But by the time that all this happened, everyone thought, ah, stuff it. And the library was kind of just put in the background. And that really is, it was a sad thing because it was such a great library comes out and I'm, I'm sure there are a handful of people out there who picked it up and said, okay, this this will be great, I'll get this. Um, people who are fans of Sound Iron obviously would have uh, contemplated it a lot more. But it was just put in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was just ah, a, a culmination of events that just didn't do the library justice. And because of that, it was overlooked. And a lot of people thought that they were going to get it incomplete. And when they realized they didn't, they pretty much thought, ah, we'll forget it. Which is, is sad. That shouldn't have happened. Now, there's nothing we can do to rectify that now, but I'm going to provide these series of videos for you so that you can have a listen to the library and get to know it a bit more. Um, obviously, I gave you my theory on, on why I think it's, it's a top-notch library. I've played a lot of libraries in my time, and this, so far, I, I, I probably have 10 brass libraries, and this one is at the top of my list. This is the one I use um, in all of my final songs now. Um, obviously, songs that were released previous to this library, I was using um, Hollywood Brass. But this uh, is now my go-to because it fits in the mix. Uh, you don't need to compress it um, at all uh, if, 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 if you don't want to. You don't need to put too much reverb on it. This has become my saving grace when it comes to brass. And I know because I've got a lot of brass libraries and I've tried a lot of different techniques in putting brass in the mix. And this library does most of the work for you. So. Now that I've gone through all of that and had you sit here for um, an immense <laughs> amount of time listening to me ramble on, I'm going to finish this introduction and get on with the meat of the walkthrough. I'm going to give you a look through all of the patches and I'm going to give you a composition 
um, which shows you how the brass can be placed. Because I really want you to have another look at this library. If you're a person who kind of overlooked it at first or if you're new to um, this, the sound iron brass instrument, I really want you to give it a chance and, and have a listen to it and basically just, just reevaluate it and, um, and approach it. Give, give it a fresh start because it really deserves it. And it really is a groundbreaking library that didn't get, um, didn't get the shot it deserved. So that being said, I'm going to continue on. And if you're interested, move on to the next video, which will be the sections. So I'll catch you later in them videos.